Daedra. We have seen them around every now and then, but what are they really? Well, I could easily say that they are powerful, supernatural beings that live in the Oblivion Realms. I could say that they come in different shapes and sizes, and every now and then sneak in into our world and create havoc. But we all know there's a lot more than that. For me to explain what Daedras are, I have to go back. Way back. To the beginning, actually, where it all started. And no, I don't mean Elder Scrolls Arena. I mean the beginning of all creations in the Elder Scrolls lore. Back in the beginnings of time, there was Anu and Padme. These were the only things that existed in the void. Where they came from or why they existed, nobody knows. But it is said that they were twins. Anu represented the perfect, unchanging stasis of order, while Padme represented change and chaos. Fight ensued between them, and their divine blood was spilled. From this blood came the Et Ada, or original spirits, and this became the original inhabitants of the universe. Think of them as ethereal beings without a body or existence, kind of like floating thoughts. After a certain period of time, the spirit Akatosh formed a physical manifestation of himself, and with him brought time to the universe. The concept of time helped the other spirits manifest themselves as physical beings as well eventually. Now, this is all a lot of backstory, and I understand that, but this all has a purpose, guys. Be patient. I'm going somewhere with this, don't worry. Now we have a bunch of deities and spirits going through the universe. The spirit Lorcan eventually developed an interest in creating its own plane of existence, a place he could fill with life. He started gathering other spirits to help him perform this task and started to create the world, the plane of Mundus. Eventually, as the process of creating this world was reaching fruition, the deities that were helping him create it started realizing that they were losing their divine power in order to fuel the creation of this world. This caused many of the deities to flee the plane of existence. They managed to leave, but were severely weakened by the procedure. Those who stayed to finish the creation became too weak to ever leave the plane of Mundus ever again. I'm going somewhere with this, bros. Be patient, it'll blow your mind. From this point in the history of the Elder Scrolls, we have two divergent points. The races of men believed that humans were then created out of nothing by the divines that stayed to finish creation, and hence the humans see them all as creators. The races of Mare, or Elves on the other hand, believed that the remaining divines that stayed to finish the creation became so weak that they had to procreate in order to create future generations and in turn survive. They believe that the divines procreated and this created man and elf, so they see the divines that stayed as their literal ancestors or Aedra, while they see any divinity slash spirit that didn't help in the creation of Mundus as not their ancestors or Daedra. Boom. Yeah guys, that's right. Daedras are every single spirit slash deity slash god that is not tied to the creation of Mundus. So if you're sitting there thinking the Daedras are not as strong as the Nine Divines, you're probably horribly mistaken. The spirits that stayed to create Mundus lost most if not all of their divine power. They are essentially almost mortal, and when compared to any of the spirits outside of the realm of Mundus, they are meager pests. The only reason why they appear to be stronger is simply because no spirit can enter the realm of Mundus if not for the ones that are already inside. The only ones that are allowed to enter are those spirits whose divine energy form part of Mundus, so Aedras. And even still, they really don't want anything to do with it anyways as it drains their divine power. Other spirits, or Daedra, require other means of entering like summonings which weaken them in exchange. So yeah, here we are, this long into the video, and we just simply managed to figure out what are Daedras, but we haven't even scratched the surface on their kind. Alright, so we have already established that Daedra can't really truly enter Mundus. How then do we keep seeing them in the games and even fighting them from time to time? Well, there are always exceptions to the rule. Rules are meant to be broken. But before we get into that, I want to talk about where the Daedras actually live. As you can probably already tell, there are multiple planes of existence. The concept that there is only one universe in the Elder Scrolls lore is false. When you see the sky on Skyrim, 
and you see the moon and the sun and the stars, you aren't actually seeing those things, but it's simply the brain of the inhabitants of Nern trying to make reason of the fact that they're seeing other planes of existence. A little metaphysical and stuff, I know, right? But the stars and the sun are actually holes that were punched into Mundus by the Aedra that were escaping it when they realized their divine power was being absorbed. The sun is the hole made by Magnus, who was the first spirit that left. He left way before anyone realized what was happening, so he still had much of his strength left, and that's why his size was bigger. The light coming from all those huge holes are from Aetherius, which is the home of the original spirits, which is the place they all returned to when they escaped. Daedrus as we know them, however, live on the opposite plane of Aetherius. Why do they live on the dark side of the Force? Well, there are two types of Daedrus. Those born under the blood of Anu and Padome, and those born only to the blood of Padome. It is said that those that share both primal deities' blood are capable of good, while the spirits that only have Padome's blood are not capable of good. The Daedrus that we know and that we have seen in all of the Elder Scrolls game are all from Padome's blood, which are the agents of change and destruction in nature. So all of them live in the void in their own planes of existence, created by themselves to represent their own image. This is the reason why you can't simply walk into Mortar, I mean Oblivion. They are literally in another dimension. So how do we keep seeing them? Well, the Daedra that you see convoked into Tamriel are not actually them, they're merely projections of them. In fact, the way you see them may not even be their true form. It is said that a Daedra can take on any form they want, and the form that they usually take reflects their personalities and moralities. But, much like the Oblivion planes, they can all change that at will. This is the reason why we don't really know if every creature that came out of the Oblivion portals are all Daedras, or if some of them are simply tame animals found in their plane of existence, much like our dogs or horses. But regardless, the Daedra that we fight in the games are not there in full color, they're just physical manifestations of them. Their soul is actually still in Oblivion, which is the reason why you cannot actually kill them. If you kill a Daedra in Skyrim, for example, you only destroy their projection and their body will simply be sent back into Oblivion for reconstitution. The only way to truly kill a Daedra permanently is to kill it in its own plane of Oblivion, much like we had to do to kill Eumariel in Oblivion. Yes guys, this means that Mayrum's Dagon is not actually dead, although it can take a millennia for him to reconstitute. But uh, now that we're talking about Dagon, we have to wonder, why do they want to kill us? Why do they want to invade Mundu so bad? Well, the honest answer is that they actually don't. Most Daedrus really don't give a damn about us. They really only see Tamriel as something like a curiosity. In a world where everything is a static void of nothingness, the concept of Mundus is just simply kind of a cool thing for Daedra to study, as not many spirits really go around sacrificing their divine power to do cool stuff in the universe anymore. Some Daedras, however, do have a bigger interest in Mundus than mere curiosity, but most don't really seek to harm us in a literal sense. Um, spirits like Dagon can't really help themselves, since, since it's in their nature to seek destruction and change, even if it's not in their best interest. Which uh, brings me to my final point, Daedras are not actually evil. As far as our definition of evil goes, they are simply gods trying to entertain themselves, to be honest. <sighs> Remind me not to choose such a broad topic for the next video.